What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm here today to give you guys a review of the Under Armour Curry Flow 10 in this Iron Sharpens Iron colorway. Today's video is brought to you by Heflux. Heflux is my all-time favorite sneaker insoles and they sell ETPU insoles, which really is the same material you'll find inside Adidas Boost. So if you're looking to add some additional comfort inside your shoes, be sure to check out their website which I've linked down below in the description box. You'll see they sell a variety of different insoles, so depending on the type of insole density and the cushioning setup you're looking for, you're going to find there's a suitable insole for anyone. So I've been a paying customer of Heffalux for years now, and I find them to be very comfortable. So if you guys want to check them out and try a pair for yourself, be sure to use the code SEANGO at checkout to get 15% off your entire purchase. So this is the latest signature sneaker for Steph Curry, which is the Curry Flow 10. Releasing a couple months back, this one is the debut colorway nicknamed Iron Sharpens Iron, which is actually inspired by the Curry 2 colorway of the same name. So the retail price for this shoe is 160 US dollars or 190 here in Canada, and the colorway for this shoe on the box is just black and orange. So my initial impression when I first saw this shoe was that for a 10th signature sneaker, this pair almost looked identical to the Curry 9. So in that respect, I was a little bit disappointed. I was hoping for something a lot more elaborate and special and unique. But I guess you can say what started with the Curry 8, this is basically a continuous evolution of that model. So you can see elements of the 8 are visible on the 9, and then elements of the 9 are visible now on the 10. And before we talk about the details and my experience playing in this shoe, I did play ball in these for about three times, and I used them across two different courts, both of which the floors had different degrees of cleanliness. So first things first, here's a quick look at the box, and this comes in the exact same box as the Curry 9. So we have this white colored cardboard with this iridescent Curry brand logo on the very top, and then the bottom of the box is done in this yellow color. So the upper of the Curry 10 is almost identical to the Curry 9 in that it is constructed still out of Under Armour warp technology. So this is a complex knitted upper and has various layers of nylon, which makes it very strong and sturdy, but at the same time flexible and lightweight too. And one thing I noticed between the Curry 9 and the 10 is that this warp that they use on the 10, it feels flatter and smoother, and you can't feel the different layers on the upper as much as you could on the 9s. So you can see the warp is done primarily in black, but we have these gradient style overlays on both the sides of the toe box, along with the midfoot of the shoe as well. Covering the eyelets, we have this boomerang shaped overlay, which has a silky smooth textile overlay on top. And then on the lateral side of the heel, you'll see we have a TPU heel clip with the Curry Brand logo. And this gives you a lot of support and sturdiness on the back end of the shoe. Stitched on top of the middle of the heel, we have a heel pull tab with the Curry Ward mark in yellow, and this is constructed out of that same material that was found covering the eyelets of the shoe earlier. As for the laces, so these only come with one lace option, and they're an oval shaped lace done in black with a contrast neon yellow colored stitching. You'll see that the laces intertwine through this middle lace lock, which is formed in the shape of an X or 10 in Roman numerals, and I really like the placement of this lace lock. It really helped to secure the laces in place. Underneath this, so the tongue is pretty well padded, and it's lined in this lightweight mesh material on the exterior. On the top of the tongue, we have this neon red colored overlay, and we have another pull tab, this time with the Curry Brand logo in neon yellow. The back of the tongue is covered in more of that neon red or almost salmon colored textile, and we have a tag here with that iron sharpens iron branding, which again is a reference to the colorway of this shoe. The interior of the shoe is lined in this black colored textile, and it almost has a bit of a quilted feel to it to the touch. This inner liner is decently well padded, especially on the back heel, but you'll notice that the height of the heel of the shoe is a lot shorter compared to the Curry 9, which is something I preferred actually. Moving on to the insoles, so these come with your standard foam line insole, and we have the splatter graphic on the insole with Curry branding on the bottom. So the upper of the Curry 10 sits atop this Under Armour Flow Technology midsole. The midsole is done primarily in white, but we have this hit of hot red or salmon color on both the forefoot and the heel, and has a splatter paint effect to it. And this Under Armour Flow technology also is utilized for the outsole of the shoe as well. So when I say that, what I mean by that is this shoe actually utilizes no rubber on the outsole, unlike your traditional basketball shoes. So if I flip the shoe over to the bottom, compared to the Curry 9, the outsole traction pattern is a bit deeper, and just to the touch, it just has more of a rough texture to it compared to the Curry 9, which had much more of a smooth feel to the touch. The traction pattern itself has slightly been reworked, and in the middle you'll see we have this X shape once again, referencing the Roman numeral for Curry 10, and here we have a shank plate with the Under Armour logo, and this helps with torsional rigidity and midfoot support. 
So that breaks down the look and the construction and the technology behind these Curry 10s. And for those wondering about sizing, so I'm a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. I got these in a size 10 and they fit me pretty much perfectly. Compared to the Curry 9, the Curry 10 is a bit more of a longer fitting shoe. So I know for the 9s, some people complain that it fit a little bit too short, but this pair is much more true to size in that sense. And the width of the shoe was perfect for the width of my feet. So I feel like for most people, you can stick true to size, no problems with this model. If you do have really wide feet though, you'd probably want to go up a half size, but for everyone else, just stick with your normal actual measured foot size. In terms of the comfort on this shoe, so I personally have never been a huge fan of Under Armour Flow when it comes to comfort. It's much more of a firm and minimalistic setup, so you feel a lot closer to the ground, there's a lot of ground feel and stability. So at no point when I was wearing these did I feel like I was going to roll my ankles, because of the base of this shoe, especially on the forefoot, it does sit quite wide. But if you're looking for a lot of impact protection and softness underfoot, this is not going to be the shoe for you. I feel like it is a little bit better in that respect than the Curry 9, but it still has that general feel of a Curry sneaker. So if you're someone who historically doesn't like the feel of Curry sneakers, then you probably won't like these either. And on that note, in terms of the traction on this shoe, so this is where my opinion kind of differs from the majority of people's opinion online. So based on what I've read and from YouTube reviews that I've seen, people have been raving about the outsole traction, but for me, I wasn't totally sold. So I played on two different courts, three different times, and when the court was pristine and free of dust, this shoe was an absolute beast. It really gripped the court super, super well. I wasn't sliding whatsoever, but once you introduce a little bit of dust onto the court, that's where the shoe really lost its magic. I was sliding a lot more in this shoe compared to other sneakers that I wear, for example, the Nike KD15, and I found it personally difficult to get low in my stance to play defense because my feet were just sliding across the court when I was trying to follow the offensive player during his hard cuts left and right. So I know any basketball shoe on the market, if the court is pretty dusty, you are going to slide regardless, but I just found that the Curry 10 slid a bit more compared to other shoes that I wear with traditional rubber outsoles. But that seems to be the opposite of what other people are saying online, so maybe my experience is just different from yours. But again, leave a comment down below if you guys have worn these on not so perfect courts. And then moving on to the fit and lockdown of this shoe. This is another aspect of this sneaker that I wasn't perfectly happy with. So while the shoe fit my foot perfectly well, I felt like the placement of the laces didn't really lock down my foot that well. I think in a perfect world, if they had extended the lace holes one more, it would have really secured my foot a lot more in place. I just felt like this back half of the shoe, it wasn't as locked in as I would have liked. But the front half of the shoe was very, very locked in. I just would have liked a little bit more lacing support for me at least. So with all that out of the way now, let's toss these on feet and I'll show you guys how these look. Generally speaking, I feel like the Curry 10 improves on a lot of things that the Curry 9 was okay at, but a lot of the same problems I had with the Curry 9, specifically the traction and the fit, they weren't completely addressed on the Curry 10. So if you're fans of the Curry 9, I think this is a great upgrade over the 9, even though the model more or less looks the same. The small tweaks that they added to this shoe really make a big difference. But if you're someone who historically isn't a fan of this Curry line, then I think you won't be a fan of this model either. It probably will be a bit of an improvement for you, but I think it hasn't been improved enough, at least for me, to make me want to wear this as my everyday basketball shoe. Not to be all negative, there are definitely things I really like about this shoe. It's super lightweight, the frontal lockdown is very good, and the stability of the shoe is very, very solid as well. And I like the overall dynamic and sort of rocking motion that this shoe has. It almost feels like it's propelling me forward, which is great for a player like Steph Curry who's always in motion running off screens. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this Under Armour Curry Flow 10. What are your overall thoughts on this silhouette? And for anyone watching who's played in these, drop a comment down below to share your experience with this shoe. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on my Instagram page at esco8. Check out my Twitter as well at sean.go and visit my website at seango.ca.
So until next time, thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.